Governor Saludo presents 2022 revised state budget to reflect current realities. State government to revive Igbo cultural values. Fan inaugurate app to improve safety, security, and comfort in the aviation sector. Monkeypox cases investigated in US, Canada, and Europe. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chuko Masoludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. Good morning and welcome to the news. My name is Nonye Mokoye. Now, the governor of Anambra State, Professor Chuko Masoludo, yesterday, 19th May 2022, presented the 2022 revised draft state budget before the members of the Anambra State House of Assembly. Our correspondent, Valentine Mbadoga, completes the report. The governor in his address noted that the purpose of the 2022 revised budget is to reflect the current realities, challenges and priorities of the new administration and in the Anambra. Governor Salud recommended the current relationship that exists between the three arms of government in the state and harped on the need to sustain it to achieve one goal, which is the development of Anambra State. Our vision is to transform Anambra into a livable and prosperous smart mega city to become the preferred destination to live, to learn, invest, work, and then relax and enjoy. The agenda is predicated on four strong pillars. Robust economic transformation for a new industrial tech, slash tech, population of a comprehensive social agenda for a human capital bank that is productive at home and at portable abroad governance, rule of law, and a new value system, and a clean, green plant and sustainable communities, markets, and cities. The Speaker, Anambra State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Ucho Kafo, earlier in his address, commended the Governor for the great steps he has taken so far in driving the progress of Anambra State, and expressed the belief that the contents of the revised budget are in line with his burning desire to deliver quality governance in Anambra, where the people's welfare and total development of the state is guaranteed. He assured the revised budget will receive expeditious consideration by the House for the benefit of the Anambra. As an arm of government, the state legislature will join hands with Mr. Governor to ensure that your administration succeeds in all fronts. We are committed to enacting laws and resolutions aimed at improving the living standard of the citizenry as well as the development of the state. It is our responsibility to legitimate government programs and policies and we shall not relent in discharging our constitutional duties and responsibilities. In a vote of thanks, the member representing Nnewi North constituency in the State House of Assembly and the Deputy Chairman House Committee on Finance and Appropriation, Honorable Bono So Smart Okafo, thanked the Governor for capturing the basic needs of Indianambra in the revised budget, assuring that the House will continue to support him to give Anambra State the best leadership. I am very much elated that uh, the budget for the Ministry of Works you know, was sort of from 21 billion to 51.3 billion. And if you go a little further, you see the budget for road infrastructure, which is one of the greatest in Indiana brand needs. We will take our time to go through the budget, digest it uh, in line with our uh, practice. And in line with that, you know this time that we're going to uh, shun out our timetable for budget bilateral discussions, which we are going to be inviting all the commissioners and head of parasitas and agencies of government to come for budget defense, what we call budget defense. And it is expected that all commissioners appear in person. We do not allow uh, uh, appearance in process. The budget presentation was witnessed by members of the Anambra State Executive Council, the Secretary to the State Government, Professor Solo Chukulabelo, among others. From the State House of Assembly Complex in Oka, Valentine Mara reporting for this news. Governor Chuko Masaludo has advised youths to keep supporting leaders that will give them positive direction. Governor Saludo gave the advice during a social function in Oka. 
Our correspondent Emmanuel Chibata reports that the governor, represented on the occasion by his deputy, Dr. Nye Kachuko Ibezim, said the present administration has the interest of the youth at heart and promised to carry them along in the scheme of things. Governor Saludo, who described the All Progressives Gond Alliance, APGA, as the party that knows the hearts of the people, condemned the reckless bloodshed witnessed in the society, which is said does not in any way define the people, nor will solve the current agitations. Deputy Inspector General of Police, Mr. John Obunna Amade, visits Anambra State Police Command, interacts with officers of the command. The newly appointed Deputy Inspector General of Police is the supervising DIG for the South East and also the DIG in charge of research and planning at the Nigerian Police Force Headquarters, Abuja. A correspondent, Kenechiko Chukode, now reports. The DIG, who was accompanied by the State Commissioner of Police, Anambra State, Mr. Echeng Echeng, was received at the State Police Command Headquarters, Amobia, and welcomed by Police Ceremonial Quarter Guard Parade and senior officers before he proceeded to the Command Conference Hall, where he interacted with the officers. In a welcome address, the State Commissioner of Police, Mr. Echeng, congratulated DIG Amadi on his new appointment and commended his exploits as an officer while serving under the Anambra State Police Command, notably as officer in charge of disbanded Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SAS Okuzu, divisional police officer in charge of different areas within the state amongst other positions. Mr. Echeng appreciated the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Alkali Baba Usman, for his support in conducting a peaceful election last year, November, in the state, despite the challenges encountered. Anambra, being an economic hub in the southeast and by extension the entire nation, which is now being threatened by criminal elements, and assured of the command's preparedness to bring the situation under control through a new approach. To have you around today in Anambra Police Command, we also know that you are not a visitor to this case because for whatever the command is today, you contributed immensely to make it so. The DIG, Mr. Amadi, who prayed for the repose of souls of officers and men who have paid the supreme price in the course of their duty, emphasized that a better crime-fighting approach must be put in place in dealing with the criminal elements who are causing havoc and destabilizing the peace of Anambra and the entire Southeast. The management is, is to everything money possible to secure this order and provide an avenue where people can go about doing their lawful business. That's for Nigeria. Here in Anambra, I want to assure you that the Commission of Police and his team is doing everything possible to ensure that um, this incident of unknown government is reduced to the players of the main group. And you can attest to the fact that they have been recording successes. And with the interaction I've had with the police, they have assured me they will double their efforts to make sure that you and I can move freely in this God-less country. Recall that DIG Amadi was recently appointed by the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Usman, to replace the late DIG, Mr. Joseph Ebunike, who died in active service after a brief illness. From the State Police Headquarters, Amorbia, it's been Kenetuku Chokodi for ABS News. Now, the Anambra State Commissioner for Culture, Entertainment and Tourism, Mr. Don Onyenji, has reassured the uh, determination of Governor Chukoma Saludo in bringing back values of Ndibo. The Commissioner stated this while receiving the executive members of Radio Television Theatre and Art Workers Union of Nigeria, Retao, led by the National Vice President of the Union, Prince Emeka Kahlo, on a courtesy visit in his office at Jerome Udoji State Secretariat, Oka. Our staff reporter, Njideka Okoye, completes the report.
Tunanyenji stated that values of Ndibo include respect for elders, spirit of Onyaga na Wanneya, apprenticeship, omona, and hard work, noting that family values is the network of success. He commended the leadership of Fratao for being genuinely committed to piloting the affairs of the union and advised them to continue to work as a team, as according to him, unionism promotes human capacity for effective delivery. My spirit is with you guys. Uh, I will always support what you guys are doing because if everything is done right, the industry will be very vibrant and robust. And when the industry is robust and vibrant, there will be more employment, there will be more productivity, there will be increase in GDP, the environment, the people will be you know, better for it because there will be entertainment, there will be promotion of culture and tourism, and um, the world, the global community will begin to appreciate Nigeria even more. And while we are in Anambra State and in Digo, uh, people will get to know us more because we are the most traveled uh, tribe in the world. Earlier, the leader of the team, Prince Carlo, who thanked the commissioner for the warm reception, said the visit was to present their yearly calendar to him, as well as to intimate him on the programs of the union. Prince Carlo noted that the commissioner was one of them before now, saying that with his credibility and performance as Ratau member, they have confidence he will perform creditably now that he is a commissioner. First, like we always say that this chapter is first in, in Anambra State Council in terms of performance and fellowship. And I, I recall that day I was saying that when you started recognizing this chapter, I remember Gilbert Mokoye. Gilbert Mokoye was from this chapter and he was the person that played, acted Mwadisi in Icho. Yeah. Then he's from Nibu. Yes, I know he was following you. Yeah. He was following you from this chapter when, when the state was created. Present during the visit were the former chairman of Anambra State Council of Ratao, Comrade Andy Onwalo, Zonal Organizing Secretary, Southeast Zone, Comrade Chibi Kem Ede, among other officials. While handover of the union's yearly calendar to the commissioner formed the highlight of the visit. Inoka Njideka Okoye, ABS News. The Department of Accountancy, Chukwemeka Odumego Juku University, COOU, has ended its two-day Medan Departmental Conference with the theme, Capacity Building and Sustainable Development, the Challenge of the Fourth Industrial Revolution. The event, which took place at the Tet Fund Auditorium, Ibarium Campus, attracted respected scholars, researchers, professors, students, and stakeholders in the accounting profession. Our education pro correspondent, Theophilos Ukoha, reports. Declaring the conference open, the Vice Chancellor Chukwe Maka Odemegu Juku University, Professor Greg Wakobi, expressed confidence on the choice of speakers, whom, according to him, can profile lasting solutions on global challenges of the fourth industrial revolution. So I commend them and I commend the department, the head of the department, and the staff of the department for their thoughtfulness and for bringing this young world to sit with us today. Without the coming proof, all that we are doing is just the men and taxes. Earlier in her welcome address, the head of the Department of Accountancy, COOU, Ibarium Campus, Dr. Theresa Alfo, said the conference was aimed at availing professionals and scholars from different but related disciplines the opportunity to discuss the problems facing fourth industrial revolutions and profiling solutions. It is in line with this challenge that our department has decided to organize this conference where academics and scholars from different but related disciplines are gathered to discuss the problems facing false industrial revolutions and profound enduring solutions. The keynote speaker, Professor Benjamin Otisioma, called for urgent need for more capacity building in a world where artificial intelligence is gradually replacing natural intelligence. We need to adjust to those realities. We need to adjust ourselves to the time when uh, artificial intelligence will replace natural intelligence. If you are not prepared, 
the situation will take advantage of you. But if you're fully prepared, you will take advantage of the situation. And that's what we are training our members to do, our people, so that they will be up at doing. And they will fit into that, you know, sphere where they will be masters of the situation rather than having the situation master them. The lead paper presenter, Professor Wilson Harbert, discussed key aspects of building capacity to include talent hunt, staff selection based on skills, and providing skill enhancement training and retraining. Later in an interview, the state accountant general, Dr. Chukudi Okoli, said that government is determined to engage all stakeholders in capacity building for a sustainable development. Others who made recommendations included the permanent secretary, Ministry of Tertiary Education, Dr. Emenike Ezinandu, who is also the chairman on education, as well as the dean, faculty of management science, COOU, Professor Gordon Akam. Presentation of awards to distinguished personalities climaxed the event. From Ibarium Theophilus Okoha, reporting for ABS News. Now on the four national scenes, sorry, Captain Rabiu Yadudu, managing director. The Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, FAN, has inaugurated taxi app loading booth at Namde Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja. Captain Yadudu, who was represented by the group Captain Usman Sadiq, Director of FAN Security Service, said in his opening remarks on Thursday that the move would definitely increase the country's gross domestic products, according to Mr. Yadudu. The project will improve safety, security and comfort and further ensuring development in the aviation sector. FANBOS urged the commercial body to support the project's sustainability and enforcement for the hope of general, generality of Nigerian people. In an address of welcome, Mr. Kabir Mohamed, FAN Regional General Manager, North Central, said that the commissioning of the app was a resolute action to move from analog to digital at all airports in the nation. The World Bank has said it is set to disperse a total of $30 billion to fund existing and new projects in Nigeria and other countries as part of a global response to combat the ongoing food security crisis. According to the bank, it is working with countries on a $12 billion new project fund for the next 15 months, it said the projects are expected to support agriculture, social protection to cushion the effects of higher food prices and water oil irrigation projects. It added that most of the funds would go to Africa, the Middle East, Nigerian Europe, sorry, Eastern Europe, Central Asia, and South Asia. The Global Bank disclosed this when it announced how it plans to be part of a comprehensive global response to the ongoing food security crisis. Now, on cases of suspected and confirmed monkeypox are being investigated in the U.S., Canada, Spain, Portugal and the U.K., according to health authorities and local media reports. Most recently, one case was confirmed in the U.S. and 13 suspected cases are being investigated in Canada. Health authorities say five infections have also been confirmed in Portugal, as well as seven in Spain. Monkeypox is most common in remote parts of Central and West Africa. Cases of the disease outside of the region are often linked to travel to the area. Monkeypox is a rare viral infection which is usually mild and from which most people recover in a few weeks. According to the UK's National Health Service, the virus does not spread easily between people and the risk to the wider public is said to be very low. And on Sports News, Sierra Leone head coach John Kester has named his squad for the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations qualifying fixtures against Nigeria and Guinea-Bissau. The Lyon Stars will confront the Super Eagles at the Moshuda Abiola Stadium, Abuja, on Thursday, June 9. The West Africans will host the, the Jurutus of Guinea-Bissau four days later at the General Lansana Conte Stadium. Kesa kept faith with majority of the players that featured at AFCON 2021 in Cameroon. 
talismanic striker Kei Kamara announced his retirement from international football last month, so was not included in the squad. And with that news, uh, sports news, we conclude the news. But remember, you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television Orca. Follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And the main news again, Governor Saludo has presented 2022 revised state budget to reflect current realities. State government is to revive Igbo cultural values. FAN has inaugurated app to improve safety, security and comfort in the aviation sector. And on the foreign scene, we reported that monkeypox cases have been investigated in U.S., Canada, and Europe. And here is a special message. Governor Chuko Masoludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that's the news. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nonya Mokoye. Good morning and have a great day.